Hola a todos, estamos en el pabellón de América Latina y el Caribe organizado por CAF en la COP28 que se está realizando en Dubái, donde les estamos proponiendo una serie de conversaciones con expertos y referentes sobre las oportunidades y los desafíos que supone la acción frente al cambio climático desde una perspectiva de la región. Y para ello hoy nos acompaña Elizabeth Gray, que es la Chief Executive Officer de Audubon y eh, vamos a tener eh, la conversación en inglés con eh, subtítulos. Elizabeth, thank you so much uh, for, for joining us. Uh, I would like to start the conversation with a concept that during the last year we hear more uh, in the a scenario of the COP, that is nature-based solutions or soluciones basadas en la naturaleza in Spanish. But it sounds something like well, all policies should be based uh, in, uh, in nature, but why we need that concept and what is the meaning of that concept? Yes, I'd be happy to explain. So we know that we have to decrease greenhouse uh, gas emissions to bring down the temperature, the global temperature. And we know that about a third of the solution can be solved by working with nature. So what exactly does that mean to have a nature-based solution? It means that we can use uh, habitats, pe things that people are very familiar with, our wetlands, mm -hmm. our forests, our uh, mangroves, our, uh, to capture and store carbon. So these systems naturally hold carbon in them. And by doing that, by holding that carbon, you can help reduce the greenhouse gas emissions in the atmosphere. So when we say using nature-based solutions, it's a way to Think about how you use nature in addition to using things like reducing your energy consumption or accelerating renewable energy. How do you use those natural systems? And the nice thing about nature-based solutions is not only do they sequester and hold carbon, but they have multiple uh, what we call co-benefits. So they have additional benefits. They benefit wildlife, they benefit people and things like that. Economies, I mean. Economies, uh, right. Yes, a lot of economic the, benefits. The focus is always an economy. That's and, right. Uh, you no, know, when you implement this kind of solution, it's also good for the economy. Always, and, yes, and, that's and exactly the, right. And the communities. And regarding that, all the work that you have been doing uh, is focusing on migratory birds. Uh, you know, I. I see the passion of a lot of people working in relation with birds. When I did a work uh, travel to the really, really south of Argentina, yeah. looking for a macatoviano, that is a, an in, endangered um, uh, bird, uh, local species yes. of bird in Argentina. And I see a lot of people working, you know, and, and for them, it was like a passion working to protect and conserve birds. So why is it so important in terms of uh, climate crisis and the biodiversity crisis to work on protect migratory birds? That's a great question. There's several different reasons. The first is the one that you touched on, that people find great joy in birds. You, the, most countries have a national bird. <laughs> yes, yeah, people <laughs> have, it's a source of national pride and national joy. And birds also connect people. They connect people across different cultures and ideologies. People will travel to different countries. Bird-based tourism is growing. So birds, in that sense, are important. They're, they're important for the ecology of the system. They pollinate, they disperse seeds, they eat mosquitoes that can be carrying uh, diseases that are harmful to human beings. So they're important for that. But most importantly, we consider birds indicator species. So if, a, if an area is becoming degraded and destroyed, birds are one of the first species to leave. If you build resilience into a system and start to restore it, birds are one of the first to come back. So one thing I like to say is birds need similar things to what people need. They need clean air, they need clean water, and they need healthy systems, which are all based on a healthy climate. So, And as you mentioned, I would like to put the focus on this, is that as everything is connected, it's not right. only the bird um, who is living. I mean, what is the impact that that implicates? Exactly. Uh, if the bird is not there. That's exactly right. If we have birds, so in my lifetime, just where I live in North America, we've lost three billion birds just in my lifetime. And so if birds start disappearing, the whole system starts to break down. It's a real problem. 
And what are the particular impacts that you are seeing uh, of climate change in ah. the migration of, of birds? It's, it's somewhat frightening. We have a new scientific study that shows that about two thirds of all birds that remain are vulnerable to extinction with climate change. So for all, National Audubon Society, it is mission, we call mission critical to address climate because climate is impacting uh, birds, it's impacting migratory birds, it's also impacting the habitats that birds rely on and that are also really, really important to people. And I'll give you a concrete example of a natural uh, nature-based solution that maybe people will understand. So mangroves and coastal wetlands, they hold about three to five times more carbon than uh, tropical forests. And for example, we work in mangrove systems um, in Latin America and Central America, and these mangrove systems buffer local communities from coastal storms. So they, they uh, protect communities, they protect people, their habitat for birds, the coastal wetlands and the mangroves. And so that's what I mean by having multiple benefits that also benefit economies as well, which of course is critically important for all of us. I, I love the idea that, that you choose um, an example with mangroves because it's like we always we talk about the importance of uh, conservate and protect forests right uh, and and it looks like it's the only ecosystem that That's we right. have I know <laughs> there's a lot of multiple ecosystems especially in the region of Latin America and the Caribbean yes. and is there trying to think of the audience that is on on, on the other side yes, of watching of course. Us, is there something that people can do to like to be part of the solution of the protection mm. and conservation of migratory birds? Of course. Well, there's many things people could do. Well, one is that we are trying to track the, the passage of birds. So people should uh, get out, uh, get out and look at birds. They should try to incorporate what they're seeing, write down what they're seeing and feed that into local uh, universities or systems. We have a big platform that tracks birds so we love we call it community science where people can participate yes. in the science which is wonderful but also talk to your legislators talk to the people who represent us and talk about the importance of protecting nature mangroves and you're from argentina grasslands are yes, very important I mean, we, wetlands we, we right still, we still are fighting for a lot to protect wet, yes, wetlands yes and and yes it, i mean it's not it's not that the law is going to be the only solution, but it's necessary it's a huge to, to part have of it. Yes. That's right. And also, as you work in your local communities, just cherish those natural areas and recognize they're giving you the clean air that you need, the clean water that you need, the habitat for wildlife that, that we all need to keep this planet healthy into yes. the future. For us. I mean, and we, for all and of for us. us and for, uh, yes. <laughs> That's right. And for them as well. Uh, Elizabeth, thank you so much. Uh, for being here to, to talk, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> eh, los invitamos a seguir las redes sociales de CAF para conocer las próximas conversaciones sobre las oportunidades y los desafíos que supone la acción frente al cambio climático desde la perspectiva de América Latina y el Caribe. Muchas gracias.